Hey, this is DIYs by Dar, and this is a piece of furniture that I acquired and was free, a 1942 sewing cabinet. It's in pretty rough shape. Um, you can see all the scratches and the dings, and when you fold it over, the top portion, all the stains, and when you start looking around, you can see the veneer is coming off this one side, really peeling all the way from the bottom, a little bit pulled away uh, from the side. Back side, pretty bad with the veneer as well. And this side, not so bad. So I think two, two of the sides were towards the window and the other side was towards the inside of the house. So I'm going to take this and clean it up. Uh, it has veneer. You can see the top layer there and the bottom layer, both veneers. And this is the way I clean it. It's here in Michigan, it had to be like April. I was still recovering from my hip surgery, so moving a little bit careful. And if I have something that is extremely dirty like this, I'm gonna give it the once over outside with heavy soap and I'm going to spray it off with the hose. Yes, I am. Um, I used crud cutter on this, really suds it up. I also had a scrub brush that I used and scrubbed it as well. It was a pretty dirty piece. Uh, I went ahead and I took um, the, the round piece or the kind of half moon shaped piece of metal that was in the middle where the sewing machine would slide down into the cabinet. I did remove that. And I am going to remove the bobbin holder or the thread holder as well. But I'm going to put that back on. That'll be real great for holding pencils, pens, for the idea where I'm going with this piece. And I just rinsed it right out every single corner, scrubbed it with the scrub brush and really, really rinsed it. It was pretty dirty. I did start at the bottom, but then I went ahead and give it the once over again from the top and rinsed it all the way back down through the bottom again to make sure that I did get all that soap off. I did put this in my house probably for a few months in the heat and it really had a good chance to dry out before I brought it back outside and now you can see it's summertime here and I have shorts on and I got out the uh, orbital and I had an 80 grit on there and I really wanted to cut through the um, type of staining that was on there, the scratches that were on there. And here I had my skill sander and I had the pads um, from, um, oh boy, I can't think of the company right now. This is terrible. But um, you can use those pads on anything that has a hook and loop, which I did on my skill sander. And it gives you that cushy kind of sanding that you can get in moldings and different grooves a lot easier. Surf Prep. Surf Prep is the name of the company and I'll, I'll have it in the description um, so you can find those types of sanding uh, pieces like rad pads and if you've got hook and loop you can use them or just use them plain. This thing was in overall pretty bad shape. Um, I didn't think I was going to really be able to go through that veneer that much. The gouges and the scratches were so deep that I probably would have to burn right through it. So I'm taking it down enough and I can see that I'm probably going to have to go ahead and uh, spray this with some stain blocker. There again is that side, um, and I just was getting antsy, so I went ahead and I started to fill some of those scratches 
on the top of the piece. I knew it was going to take me quite a while. I'm using Dixie Bell Mud right here, which I really like that product a lot. It reminds me a lot of working with clay and it is very water friendly. This thing had uh, scratches and dings and pretty much any place that I looked, I was filling a spot. Just, I wanted it to have the smoothest surface that I could get. So I was filling them. It was warm, very, very warm. So it wasn't taking very long for this stuff to dry off. Here's that real deep gouge in the t in the top. Um, it just started to push some in there. I'm trying to overfill it slightly, but then still straighten it out. And um, I did have to go and use two coats on some areas that had a lot of really deep gouges, or I may have missed it the first time around. So there was some filling with mud, letting it dry lightly sanding and then going back and filling with some more mud. Well, I looked at this on the front and I thought with what I wanted to do with it, I really needed to take it off because it wasn't going to give me enough room to do what I wanted to do on the front of this with it on. So I took a little screwdriver and just tapped off that bit of wood that was on the front that went all the way around that door. That is a cat bird. I used my regular sander and that worked great. I believe I had a 120 sandpaper in there. And I'm gonna use my skill sander here in a second because I can't really get in them corners the way I wanted to and I just wanted to hit where that molding was around because it was kind of almost coming pretty close to poking through that veneer and getting to that wood underneath. Here were all the tools that I was using that day. It was pretty crazy out there. I had like four, four different types of saws, or I'm sorry, sanders. And there I finally put some water on top of that area to see if I could get that veneer to come off. I had a dampened towel sitting on there. I had it on there for a few hours. And when I came back, it was all nice and wet. And I thought, hmm. I used a different tool, a Rockwell tool, um, with just a flat paddle on it to see if I could get it to pop up. It didn't really work that well. Um, I think when I put the water on, basically what it seemed to do was bring a little bit of life back to that veneer and give it a little drink of water. So that just made it, made it more difficult. And then I also found that it left off a type of a, a residue that wasn't there before. I think I'd have been better off if I just would have let it sit in the sun and, and uh, baked it off or maybe the other method would have been to take a heat gun and try to get it off with a heat gun that may have worked a whole lot better i mean it was downright sticky tacky you could feel it slimy i had to change the tool out end of the tool and i went with a cutting and cutting blade basically i just had to cut that right off the top as best i could and 
tried not to damage the wood too much. I knew I was going to have to repair it now, but that was the best plan that I came up with to try to get that off in a timely manner. Um, just carefully and slowly chipped away at it. You can see I had a lot of debris there. It was adding up trying to get that up off of there. Even there on that side, trying not to gouge it up too much and just removing that layer. Straighten it off as much as I could. Um, it didn't all completely want to come off, even though it had been wet. Um, I tried to straighten it as best I could right on the very end there. So it was just like a gradual kind of elevation and this was kind of what I ended up with. Have to fill all that. This was the other side. Um, this is a, when it was all dried out. And I went ahead and here again, I love the mud. It's great. This is just a little spatula that I did get from Dixie Bell as well. And I, I think I've seen them at like Lowe's or Home Depot. And I really like it. It works great. You can go ahead and spread what you need on and put it in a real thin layer. If you want to try to balance the levels out, get those ends so there's not so much of a um, noticeable difference. That was the one side and that was the other side when I got done. Really had to use a lot of mud. <laughs> when I compared to what I used on the top, it was hardly any. When I got to the inside, there I really had to kind of, this was before I sanded it down on the inside there. I had to use a lot of mud on the inside as well. But, sanded down, didn't look too badly. Here I'm using one of the sponge surf prep sanding sanders. It is foamy and you can manipulate it so it'll go into the corners where you need or on some of those areas like the moldings. And as I'm sanding, I'm just feeling. I'm trying to make sure that this is as flat as it can go, that it's meshing in together. The bottom of the legs um, were pretty rough as well. Once I sanded them down and I started to really see where all the damage was, here it needed a lot of mud, Dixie Bell mud as well, uh, and the brown, and I had to just apply it with my finger and go right around in a circle and try to rub that in. These were so damaged, I mean, you, you could just see basically a lot of the wood grain was up. So just trying to even that wood grain out and also if there were any really deep gouges on there. And it sanded very, very nicely. I used my rad pad. So you can basically go right around the end of that or right around that spindle and it'll knock down any of the high spots on that mud and help so the paint looks nice and flawless on there when we get to that point. There was an area right in the corner that I was a little worried about and I thought okay I'm gonna put some glue in here. I kinda had to fit it in there with a stick and let it run down and wipe the excess off. And I thought, okay, if I can get this up and get some wood clamps on it, I'll pull that back together tight. And I was able to get those on and I clamped it and it was working because the excess glue is leaking out the end. I waited overnight and when I went to take them off, I was pretty pleased with what 
the results were it looked uh, really great. It was holding together from what I could, um, well, it was, it's a pretty solid piece already, but that one end there was kind of pulling out just a little bit, maybe a little bit wobbly. And after I got that done, there was no wobbling with it at all. It was pretty solid. I could, I could pick it up and pull each direction and nothing was moving in there. So it worked great. Getting a little bit closer here, I went ahead and took a tack cloth and started to get all of the excess dust off uh, outside, of course. Beautiful 4th of July weekend here in Michigan. Uh, temperatures were really warm, 85 to 90 degrees and um, not really that humid. It was, it was kind of dry. So getting that dust off between that and um, that old dust brush that I use. I needed to also get the hardware taped off. I wasn't going to take it apart and so I had to take the time to tape the hardware. And so that's what I did. Took a scalpel and put that tape on there. Put it down nice so when I get it all done, I can pull that tape off and then whatever I decide to do with the color of that hardware, maybe I'll just leave it the way it is or possibly black. Okay, finally, we got the Bin Zinser Shellac Spray to stop stains from coming out and also odors from coming out. So I, I had a bit of a can there and I thought, you know, I'm probably going to run out and I did. So I had to go get um, a couple different cans and I got two just to make sure. I went ahead and sprayed the inside really, really good. Every inch. Went and got the outside really, really good. Every inch. Yeah, it was it was drying pretty quickly out here that day. It was, it was, um, I think that the paint was almost drying in the air before it was getting on the piece. I did have to do some sanding in between each coat and I could feel quite a bit of dust from that uh, on the surface. So I had to knock that off before I went ahead and sprayed that once again. I didn't want any order getting out and that side that's up right now, there was just really a lot of staining in it. Finally, to the top. Went ahead and gave that its coat of primer and let it dry real good outside in this hot, beautiful weather that we had. two-part project, two videos, because it really took a lot to get this far with this piece. I think it was one of those that you probably should have just thrown away and not done anything with, but I'm always up for a challenge and I wanted to see if I could do what I wanted to do with it. So up to this point, I well have over 20 hours into it from taking and washing it, which I know that was a little unconventional with taking it outside with a hose, but it was so dirty I had no option other than to scrub it and rinse it with the hose. And I will do that with some pieces, but if you go that extreme, you need to make sure them pieces are really dried out. In the video you can see I had a lot of clothes on it was and I was moving still a little bit funny because I wasn't that far out after my hip replacements but it was cold here in Michigan it must have been April and this sat inside my house in the heat for a good 
two to three months before I actually started to do any work on it. And it was already warped. So the water that I used was definitely necessary to clean everything out. It had a slight odor, but an odor of like a museum, like old furniture. Nothing that was smoky, nothing that was animal in origin, nothing that was really, really bad. Just kind of smelled like old furniture. So I knew I was going to have to seal it with some Ben Zinser shellac spray to help block stains, to help block odors. Um, it did have a lot of stains in it and I knew it was going to be a bleeder. When I wiped it with the rag, I could see that come, the color come right off onto that rag. So I, I really didn't have too much choice in the matter. And I could not get the veneer off, no matter what I tried. It was a nightmare. Most of it that was just dried and rotted, like a dry rot, came off very easily. Um, when I wet it, that seemed to almost make matters worse because it reactivated the glue and when I ran my hand over it I could actually feel the stickiness of the glue so I had to use one of my other tools and I used the flat paddle first to try to remove that veneer and I, I really wasn't getting anywhere so I had to put the actual one that is for cutting wood on there and basically try to cut it off the surface and go back and repair um, with uh, Dixie Bell mud. I used a lot of Dixie Bell mud on this piece and I'm glad that I had the Dixie Bell mud. Dixie Bell mud uh, for me is one of the best type of fill-in agents that you can use because it's so water friendly and I'm used to using clay and it reminds me so much of clay. You can kind of form it, skim it, wipe it with water, sand it lightly, and, and I just love it. This piece has so much Dixie Bell mud in it, I swear, it's probably holding the piece together. Once I got that on, of course, and got it all sanded down, I had to go ahead and spray it with that shellac, and I ended up using almost three cans. Um, I did this on July 4th weekend. It was extremely warm here in Michigan. I want to push, I want to say pushing between 80 to 90 degrees. So it was rather hot outside. It dried really quickly for me and I got all those coats on. And at this point, I am ready to go ahead and paint it. And what I'm going to use is Dixie Bell paint in Bunker Hill Blue. And if you paid attention to the video, and maybe even in the back of this one, you can see where I'm going to go with this piece. So painting it, uh, I'm going to use some new zebra brushes. I, I was thinking about spraying it, but I thought, no, there's a lot of crooks and crannies here on the inside. I just bought a nice bundle of zebra brushes and got 10% off. Um, using one of the gals uh, codes and went through her um, site to get that percentage off so it was like basically getting a free brush by the time I got done so I'm going to be using some different styles of brushes for this which are for spindles for flat for corners for moldings so we'll see how that goes I'm going to go ahead and get it painted and if you were paying attention you'll see what I'm going to do to this piece, but that one you're going to have to wait until next weekend to get the results and hopefully I can get it done. Have a good day people. Like and subscribe to my channel.